Squadron G4, World War I. Although fighters often get more attention, aviation's most influential role during World War I was reconnaissance. The extensive deployment of the Cordon G4 in this role made it a particularly important early military aircraft. The Cordon G4 series were the twin-engine bomber introduced by the French in the early years of World War I. The system was initially in service with the French Air Force but was later put to good service at the hands of British, Italian and Russian pilots. Produced in two variants, the previous B2 and the newer A2 variant, the Cordon G4 appeared in concert with a total of 1,421 aircrafts. The 1917 French twin-engine Cordon G4 was of great significance as a light bomber and reconnaissance aircraft. This was the first type of aircraft that was primarily used when these important air missions were conceived and pioneered during World War I. Furthermore, despite the limitations in speed and armament, the Cordon G4 is quite reliable, has a high climb rate and is pleasant to fly, all characteristics to make it a good trainer after its combat effectiveness had decreased. Many Allied pilots received initial flight training on the Cordon G4. Gaston and René Caudron were among the earliest aircraft manufacturers in France. After building and testing several early designs in 1909 and early 1910, the brothers established a flight school in Crotois and an aircraft factory at Rue in 1910. The first Caudron. The first factory produced Caudron was the A4, an Anzani 35 horsepower tractor powered biplane in which the pilot sat fully exposed behind the rear column of the lower wing. Caudron's next major design, the Type B, was the first to feature a nacelle pilot fuselage characteristic of many later Caudron aircrafts. It was equipped with a 70 horsepower Gnome or a 60 horsepower Anzani engine mounted in front of the steering shaft with the pilot directly behind. Although a tractor, the tail section of the B-type is supported by rods extending from the rear edge of the wing, an arrangement more common on thrusters. Side control is done with wing buckling. Type B establishes the basic configuration of the quadrant design through the G4 model. The first of the famous Quadrant G family appeared in 1912. Originally designed as a trainer, the G-type was developed into the G2 at the outbreak of World War I and only entered military service in 1914 with the two-seat versions. At that time, the Quadrant factory was moved to Lyon, where an improved version called G3 was being produced in significant numbers. Soon after, a second factory was opened at issy les moulineaux near Paris to meet the military need for this type of aircraft. The G3 is primarily a two-seater, but a few have been converted to a single-seat version. They are powered differently by the 80 horsepower Le Rhône or Gnome rotary engines or 19 horsepower Anzani radial engines. A total of 2,450 G3s were built, with a smaller number built under license in the UK and Italy. The G4 was developed from the G3 series of reconnaissance aircrafts similar to a dedicated bomber platform. From the outset, the design focused on how much bomb payload the aircraft could sustain while still providing good flight characteristics. Power come mainly from twin Leron rotary engines that make around 80 horsepower each. The engine proved to be better than the one used on the G3 series and allowed an extra crew member to sit in the nose with a defensive machine gun and a bomb with a payload capacity under the wings. The G4 design is characterized not only by the twin engine layout and dual wing assembly but also by the rear mounted four wheel drive system. The two man crew consisted of a pilot and a gunner observer. Defensive armament is typically limited to a 7.7mm machine gun and bomb capacity ranges between 220 pounds and 250 pounds. The fours were fitted with a gun mounted on the tip of the upper wing and pointed aft, but this proved ineffective and it was frequently removed from service. Some G4s had a second gun mounted directly in front of the pilot on the deck of a battleship, such as on the NASM Cauldron. But usually, pilots and observers carry only handheld weapons to respond to attacks from behind. Some G4s carry cameras for high altitude reconnaissance, but usually, pilots and observers carry only handheld weapons to respond to attacks from behind. The G4 prototype flew for the first time in March 1915 and 1,358 were built in three main versions, the Quadrant G4A2 for reconnaissance, 
the G4B2 for bombing and the G4E2 for training. The A2 has a wireless kit for artillery detection missions, B2 can carry up to 220 pounds of bombs and E2 has a dual control for instruction. A special armoured version of the G4, designated G4IB, was deployed to leading French units. The letter B represented blindage, the French word for armour. In addition to reconnaissance, bombing and training missions, the Cauldron G4 sometimes acted as a long-range escort for other bombers. By 1916, G4 had replaced G3 in most Cauldron squadrons. Widely used as a bomber during the first half of 1916, his deployment in that role was severely reduced that fall. The Cauldron's relatively slow speed and inability to defend itself from the rear made it increasingly vulnerable to fighter attack as Germany's air defences improved, but the Cauldron continued to be widely used as a reconnaissance aircraft into 1917. By early 1918, almost all of the Cauldrons still in service had been converted to training duties. In addition to the French, the Cauldron was widely used by British and Italian units and to a small extent used by the Russians and Belgians. Ten Cauldron G4s were sold to the United States in November 1917 and transferred to the US Air Service's 2nd Airline Instruction Center at Tours. G4 cauldrons have been manufactured in Britain as well as France and used by Allied powers including Russia. British pilots use the aircraft to repeatedly disrupt seaplane and zeppelin bases across Belgium with great success, while the Italians use the machine's high altitude capabilities to fly to good effect in the Alps. The French and Russians both use this type in reconnaissance roles where the ship's radio also proved useful in the artillery detection role. In many respects, the Cauldron G4 was a pre-war design, with warp wing control, lightweight construction and limited visibility. However, it is of great significance as a light bomber and reconnaissance aircraft. This was the type of aircraft that was primarily used when these important air missions were conceived and pioneered during World War I. Although fighters often get more attention, Aviation's most influential role during World War I was reconnaissance. The Cauldron's extensive deployment in this role made it a particularly important early military aircraft. Furthermore, despite its speed and weapon limitations, the Cauldron was quite reliable, with a high climb rate and pleasant flight, all characteristics that made it a good trainer after effective combat matches were reduced. Many Allied pilots received initial flight training on the Cauldron. For all these reasons, the Cauldron occupies an important place in the history of aviation and the aircraft collection of the National Air and Space Museum. As a personal museum specimen, the NASM Cauldron G4 is also of great significance. It is one of the oldest surviving bombers in the world. Furthermore, it was the only first multi-engine aircraft in the NASM collection and one of the very few multi-engine aircraft from this period anywhere. As always, if you like this video, hit the like button to support us, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be one of the first to see my latest videos. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time.